Today, I'm doing a little project. You've probably seen some of my wiring projects before where I'm crawling up in the attic and trying to run wires. Well, I did run wires, but in today's video, I'm done running wires. So I wanna run one last line to make what I have already as far as ethernet wires ran up to the attic work for the rest of my needs. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits and in today's video, I'm going to be running a power line in my attic. And I am doing that because I want to hook up a power over ethernet dummy switch. Basically the idea here is that I am done running ethernet cables from my basement up into the attic. It's just a pain in the butt. It's doable and I've gotten better at it, but I think I have something like six wires already running up there and I just don't wanna run anymore. Now I have actually considered doing this before, but in my mind, I thought to myself, it's like, well, if you run a POE router up in the attic, especially here in Kansas during the summer, there is a very large possibility that that POE router can end up having issues from the heat. Or really for that matter, I mean, it does get kind of cold up there as well in the winter. So it's even possible that I might have some issues with the cold. But I think that electronics like this are gonna be more susceptible to felling during the heat, which is what kept me from trying this out before. However, I have found the perfect switch to hook up in my attic to try to tackle this solution. And hopefully it'll make it through next year's summer. And you might ask yourself, well, what is so special about this switch? And that answer is very simple. This is sent to me for free for review for a video I did a long time ago. So it, it was free. That's why this is the perfect switch. It was free. I have absolutely zero idea what its operating temperature is. I could look it up, but I won't. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but I don't care. This is a perfect switch because if it dies, I just don't care. However, I do plan on doing some Wi-Fi upgrades, specifically the TP-Link router that I reviewed not too long ago. I have that hooked up right now in the kitchen and it's running the super long cable from downstairs. It looks really jankety, but I just haven't taken the time to get that wired the way I want it to. So that will soon be something I'm going to tackle and I will need uh, more lines in order to do that. This one gives me eight different lines to work from and I already have, I don't know, like six lines up there. So if I have one going to this and to the rest of my cameras, then I have plenty of other lines to hook up, I don't know, access points or routers or whatever I wanna hook up later on. But there is a problem and that is what I'm going to be tackling today. And that is, I don't have power where I need it to go. So I went to Lowe's, I bought a few things for this project. That's a little junction box or whatever you call it, right? This is going to house my outlet that I purchased, which yeah, this is gonna house the outlet that I purchased. This is the little, you know, thing for it. So but once I'm done with everything, it'll just look like this. And then I can screw this in somewhere up there and I'll basically have an outlet. But I still need that power to come from somewhere. So I also bought about 50 foot of really thick speaker wire that I'm going to use to attach to probably either A, one of the garage door outlets over here, or B, if I can find a light socket that's in the area, I might just tap into the power there. But I do think that I could at least use maybe one or two layers of the speaker wire since it was really, really cheap, and I shouldn't have any problems just because there should be enough metal there to keep it from overheating. And hopefully you watch this video long enough before going into the comments to tell me how stupid I am because I actually did buy electrical wire. so. I'm not gonna use speaker wire, that was just a troll. I don't apologize for anything. This is type 12 to 600 volts, 50 feet. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be more than enough for my needs, especially because at most I'm gonna be running a router and maybe some sort of potentially another project in the future uh, cooling solution where I need to find a power adapter and a way to hook up some fans. That way I have less of a chance of this router uh, going out in the summer. But it's October right now, everything is cooling down. I don't have to worry about that just yet. So that will be something I tackle later on. Either way, right now I need to run some power so I could do any of this anyway. And even though I know how much you guys all enjoy watching me whip out Old Blue and hook up my little redneck uh, ladder thing that I have, I actually haven't officially long enough rat a ladder, so I'm going to hopefully kind of sort of be getting up there the right way. I actually have to kind of get up there to uh, 
move the board out of the way. That should be right, I think, more or less. Yeah, that should work. One thing you can't forget when you're doing something like this is your handy dandy, homemade, revolutionary attic light. This allows me to have light everywhere I look. It's amazing. This is the uh, battleground so far. I have a few cables. They don't look pretty or anything, but you know, so far everything's been working as I needed it to. So, you know, so far so good, but I don't want to run any more wires. Okay, so after actually walking all the way over there, I realized that that wasn't where I was going to start. Yeah, I was actually going to be starting over here. Uh, this is where the plug-in is for uh, the power that I'm going to tap. You see, the problem with tapping something that's a little bit closer over there, like, I don't know, a, a light socket outlet, for example, is that that power is controlled by a switch indoors. So if I wired it to something, let's say the hallway light that is you know, considerably closer than what this one is, then I'd have to have the hallway light at least turned on, not necessarily have a light bulb in there, but you know, it just wouldn't work out. I want it to be constant power. So instead, I need to shove a uh, cable through the back end of this and then go back down into the garage, hook up another ladder, and then wire this one um, to where it's hooked up constantly. And it's a little freaking warm up here, even though it's cold outside. It's like 60 degrees outside and it's like 80 up here. So yeah, looks like it's just as thick, if not maybe a little bit thicker than what's already being used. Should probably, if I was gonna do this right, I should probably cut power. Might work. Now that that's slid in there, I'll be able to take off this plate down there and be able to wire that up. <sighs> okay, so from what I can tell, the power should be out because the thing down here does not appear to be working anymore. And I am standing on not the top one, but close to the top one. But since the power's out on this, just need to take these off and wire these up. Freaking spiders everywhere. I'm doing this this way, a couple reasons. You guys can see this hole right here. I've already drilled a hole in here so I could hook up a camera once. And I don't like that idea because, um, well, apparently, according to a few sources, including the internet comments in one of the videos that I made, uh, if you're running extension cords like that, you know, in these areas and something happens, then you run the risk of a fire starting and your insurance company giving you, you know, a little bit of headache trying to get an insurance claim made. So I don't want to have to deal with that. So this is definitely more of a safer way for me to do this. If I can run and actually wire a new outlet up there, then I'll just have a much more secure way of getting power without doing it kind of janky. There it is. I mean, I don't necessarily have to cut into those or anything. I just hook that right up to that and good to go. Negative, positive, I guess it's not really how AC works, but still you get my drift. Voila, consider this tapped, just like that, easy as pie. Okay, now that that is ran successfully, or hooked up, tapped successfully, now I can take this wire and I can run it over to where I really need power. Starting to see this little plan unfold here. Just gotta take that apart. There you go. 
Ooh, that would have hurt. And what is the best way to do this? I feel like I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Ninety-nine percent sure. Fifty feet should be enough. So who knows, right? I feel like I'm gonna have to go up and over. Over at least. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go over. Over to here. Yeah, there we go. That should work. This is how you do a jet electrician work right here. Like, I don't think it can get any better. I really think this is professional level electricianism. And no one can tell me differently. And there you go, got wire. Oh, got myself some spare wood. I'm going to uh, stick this right about here, I think. Yeah, right about here. And then that will let me um, get this off the ground because that, for some reason in my head, makes sense, you know? I don't know if that's right, if it's the best thing to do, but what I'm gonna do. So, I'm just line that up nice and not straight at all. Come on, little booger. There we go. Perfect. All right. What do you think? I think right there, is that even straight? I don't know, it's straight enough. This one. Eh. Straight enough, maybe. Maybe. A little less, there we go. Oh, wow. Now that should really be enough, I think, for me to run this thing. Which is this, this little thing right here. I'm gonna run this probably, probably off to the side, I think. I think it's gonna be just like, just like that. That's the way it's looking like it's gonna get ran. Perfect. Box installed, wood installed. Man, I am on a roll right now. This thing is definitely long enough. That I could probably cut off about this much. That'll be good.
There we go. You know what? Just realize I need to run it through the loop. So all that was a waste of my time. But at least I know how to work it now. Voila. Look at this. It's coming along real nice like. We'll stick this up in here. looking like up close you can kind of see it look at that 100% safer than the way it was before and you might be wondering to yourself why didn't I just put this on that well there's a very good reason for that and I'll show you that here in a second this is the final touch boom Look at that. I bet you thought I couldn't do it. <laughs> Proved you wrong. Now, there's another thing that I wanted to do. Maybe, I'm still on the fence, whether or not I want to, but I think I want to. And that is, put this up here. I don't know if this is gonna be a good idea though. I kind of want to put this up here though. Or maybe below it. That's going to be a lot harder. Because my idea was like, I can put the switch right here sitting on top of this. But if I put it on top, it'd be better. Probably. I can even angle it. That way I can kind of put it right here. And it's a little bit more out of the way. I probably should have just cut this to be shorter. Or I can make it real jankity. Kind of have it hanging off a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. That way it'll at least be out of the way. I don't have to cut it, it's fine. It doesn't even have to be, be straight. Now I have a platform to put the switch on. That way, it'll be down and out of the insulation. And kind of out of the way, you know? Let's put a third one in here, just for good measure. Perfect. All right, more or less, it works. I got a platform, can put stuff on, can plug it in right here, and I should be good, wired, ready to go. I just gotta go turn on, I just gotta go turn on the power and then uh, see if anything catches on fire. Yeah, there's a better look at my handiwork. As you can see, totally legit, 100% contractor approved. There's absolutely zero way that this could have been done any better. I'm basically saying that that is perfect in the most sarcastic way possible because it is really, really janky. But you know what? I think it's gonna work. I think it's nice. I like it and I have power and I think I need to get a staple gun and staple that out of the way. Probably, maybe, something. I need to do something about that, probably. Okay, so here's where I am. I got the switch. Again, eight port, Yon Lee smart POE switch. It's actually, it's really not that smart. It's not, it's nothing great, but the biggest thing for me is that it was free. So I don't really care if this thing blows up on me. Either way, I have only one POE camera that I can't run off this. And that is gonna be that Unify one. Um, you know, cause they have their own special little prissy power supply that they need. So, it looks like it lit up. So I'll do anything else. It has power, so I guess that's good. But either way, 
this is the one i don't know if you can see that no nope, can't see that this is the one right here god damn it this one right here i know this is the wire that goes to uh the ubiquity camera so i can't use that and this one has actually balanced inputs or uplink ports so um, i can hook up two of these cables not that i need to but i'm still gaining eight so if by any chance there's any issues i'll have two up up ports that i can go off of so that's nice just take that out plug that in there you go and that also helps that if one of these ports go down i'll have a backup port for it to work off of so there's that so you know so now both of those it's a little messy up here it's just a matter of Plugging these in. Voila, so I can see the link is working. It's coming on, it's blinking green. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's blinking green. It looks like communication is being had. So that's good. Plug in the rest of these. And I'm done. My cameras are, they should start coming back up here in a second, but I'm gonna have to, look, I'm gonna have to wait to see if they come back up. So the the idiot in myself. You see that, that gray wire right there? See how that runs down and plugs into that? Well, the idiot in myself, in my haste, actually plugged that into the middle one over there. And then I was sitting there like, why ain't it working? What's going on? But after I realized what I did, I fixed it. And now all my cameras are working including my garage which is you know power of your ethernet since i use the little converter but everything's working now so that's awesome okay so i'm kind of thinking that since i'm already in the attic kind of already got the ball rolling on this whole crawling through the attic sort of thing the entire concept here was to be able to hook up cameras additional cameras with ease by having this uh, poe switch hooked up so now that I'm kind of on a roll, I'm thinking I'm just gonna hook up this new Amcrest camera that I got, which spawned all this because I'm gonna hook, the, I'll hook up this camera on the uh, back door. Um, right now I have a Reolink Wi-Fi camera and it doesn't really work that much and I desperately wanna get rid of it. So um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that. Time to go back down, get the camera, drill a hole, run a wire. It's gonna be all the way over there over yonder so i think i'm just gonna have to use my glow sticks i could probably crawl in there a little bit but i'm gonna use my glow sticks to make that crawling a little less painful do this today i need a big drill <laughs> and this is in 3d Okay, so after further inspection, I realized in order for the end of the camera to go through the hole so I could hide it completely, I have to have a bigger bit, which I should have remembered from last time I've done this because that was also a thing then. I don't know why I didn't think about that, but you know, here we are. But I gotta take this thing down first. And yes, this is on the stairs, which you can't see it, but Lean it up against the, the uh, glass door. This is this is a terrible idea, but it's all I can. It's all I got. I'm really glad to get rid of this thing. It barely works. It's garbage. So all of this. Done. I'm literally just gonna throw that crap away. I do not need that at all. But now I need a drill. And these glowy thingies, these are what makes the magic happen. Because I can stick these up into that hole and then go out there and I can see the, the thing without having to probably crawl too far. And uh, I can pull the cable the rest of the way because I can attach this end to the ethernet cable from down here. So yeah, these make things a lot easier and I like easy. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so to address some of the comments concerns, because I know it's coming, I know that y'all are gonna be like, this power cable needs secured. So, look at this, you like this? Oh yeah, make sure let's stick it right here. Yeah, close enough. But here is the magic. That thing that I pushed through, you can see it's right there. So I'll have to crawl in there just a little bit. It came all the way down to here. So it actually got really close. I won't have to really crawl that much, but hopefully it'll pull through without yanking that cable off the end. Oh, oh yeah. Ow. It's finishing pulling this through, which shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, it's getting caught, which means something's going wrong down there, which sucks. I was tangled all hell and back, but I got it pulled and now just plug it in and really as far as being up here is concerned I think I'm done so now I can pack it up and go down I didn't die I successfully ran 110 volt power line to a PoE switch which is good it's what I needed and I'm gonna run a camera because that was kind of the whole motivation of all this is to run a camera plus even though I have this new TP-Link router, I haven't hooked it up correctly, but I'm kind of on the fence of really hooking it up too much because um, really I, I do want to get into Ubiquity, like Unify stuff, um, but none of their access points, like the ones I sell now, have Wi-Fi 6 in them. And I'm not saying Wi-Fi 6 is infinitely useful right now, but I don't want to invest in like a kick-ass, you know, Unify system, getting like maybe two or three access points throughout my entire house. I don't want to invest any money in basically technology that's outdated. Um, because here, probably at the end of, 2020, uh, end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020, I would imagine that Unify is going to come out with new stuff. And this new stuff is going to have Wi-Fi 6. So I don't know for sure, and I could wait longer, but it's not top priority right now. Um, so whether I wire the TP-Link properly or not, or whatever I end up doing, I'm going to need more access points up here, more data ports up here, and I'm gonna need them to have PoE. So getting this done today not only allows me to wire my MCrest camera, but it also is gonna allow me to wire, you know, more things in the future, which is ultimately gonna be something I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and finish up wiring up this camera. I just gotta, you know, screw it to the ceiling and plug it in now, since everything up here is really done. In fact, I think I could probably pack this up. I'll wait, because you never know, but I should be done. And this is actually going to be the Amcrest, I, don't, I forgot the model number, but it's a, a turret. Ooh, that's a bug. Ooh. I hate bugs. So this is an Amcrest turret camera, and I really think I'm gonna like this a lot more than what I would a dome camera, because dome cameras, even though they're nice, they get really dirty and rainy and stuff like that. So um, bullet cameras, they get sometimes a little dirty, but they don't get as dirty. They just don't have as much glass. So this is kind of like a bullet camera, but it's just spinny. So anyways, I just got to hook up this plate. And there we go. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm, I can adjust this later. 
However, that's what it looks like right now. So this should be pretty good. I think that I can read, uh, address this later on if I need to and uh, adjust it pretty easily. But overall, it's good. Wow. Well, I got my camera installed, got my PoE switch installed in the attic. I think you can count this as a successful day. I think I'm going to reward myself, probably with pizza. What do you think? Papa John's pizza? Oh yeah, he likes Papa John's pizza, not because of the pizza, but because of the garlic butter that you can get on the side and just swim your pizza in. It's delicious. Now that I got these extra ports, who knows, maybe I'll be adding more cameras since really, you know, running the cameras uh, one wire is a lot easier than running everything to the attic. So um, I think I need to work on some sort of a cooling solution. I don't know, it, maybe it won't matter because it gets so hot up there, but I could probably wire a power supply to just, you know, a, I don't know, 120 or 140 millimeter fan to blow on that thing, or maybe a couple fans to blow on it. But uh, I think for now it's good just because we're running into cooler weather and it's gonna go uh, super cold here real quick. So I think for now I'm good. It probably won't be until like May or April before I really have to worry about how hot it gets up there. Either way guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what I did today, make sure to comment in the section down below. As always, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a great day. Happy Halloween! Almost. So what kind of pizza do you want? I mean, I'm thinking like a meat combo, but kind of some part of me wants Hawaiian. I know, I know, it's a little weird, but I like Hawaiian, you know, ham, you know, pineapple. I mean, it is a really interesting mix. What? Half and half? You don't even eat that much. <sighs> what do you want then? Meat lovers? God, you're such a basic bitch. I'm not saying you're a bitch, I'm saying you're a basic bitch. Whatever, half and half it is. I personally want Hawaiian, okay? Probably gonna eat more than half the pizza anyways.